welcome to HDDC, HD Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and I haven't done this spiel in ages. Welcome to HDDC, the home of the granny square. <laughs> the home of crochet, yarn and all that goodness. Interspersed with a bit of gardening all of a sudden. How are you? I hope you are well. I hope that wherever you are, you're safe and you're well fed and that you have supplies and that hopefully you are finding time to get some comfort with your hook. I am doing okay. I don't have any complaints. I don't want to complain. Um, I have got, I have got some worries, but who hasn't got any worries? Um, not so much worries, just concerns, I guess. Um, I also have hay fever. I want to apologise for the last live that I did on, um, it was last Saturday. I had to nip out of the room five times to blow my nose because hay fever was strong that day. Um, I've got my prescription and whatnot and I feel a bit more on top of it today. My eyes are sore and slightly red and it's still affecting my voice but hopefully I sound okay. Um, I'll not put makeup on just because my skin doesn't like it at the moment. So this is me in all of my puffy goodness. Today is a quick sit down chat with you. I wanted to show the projects that I have been working on and finishing. Um, so for all of those that were part of my Zoom chat, which I held with my Tribe Stars, so Zoom is an online video um, software, a little bit like Skype or WhatsApp call. Um, you basically video call each other and all of the participants can um, talk and they can show what they're working on, which is great. Um, and Tribe Stars are my Patreons, which is a monthly subscription um, and you get lots of goodies. So you get uh, weekly posts of the projects that I'm working on and then also the Zoom chats and when my patterns come out, the free pattern code. So for all of my tribe stars, I did um, Zoom a couple of weeks ago now, a fortnight ago, and during that Zoom chat, it was decided that we would be hashtag team finishes. And that means that we pledged to finish our whips during the coronavirus pandemic and beyond. Um, we're going to dedicate this year to finishing whips. And so I agreed with Casey and Shardine, hey guys, um, I agreed that I would finish projects. Um, and so I'm happy to report that I've stuck to that a week later, I have got what I'm classing as three projects. So let me explain. I have a huge amount of um, blankets that I'm working on um, that just require the joining colour. And so I decided that for me, that project is classed as finished if I finished the squares ready for the joining colour. So it's not a fully finished object as in you're not going to see three blankets, but you are going to see a stack of what I'm classing as finished objects. Um, as well with Team Finisher, I have decided that... Sorry, I get itchy ears with hay fever. <laughs> oh dear. And a nose, and face, and blah, blah, blah. Um, So, anyway, with Team Finisher, I also decided that I wouldn't start any more projects until my projects I'm working on are finished. Um, and I made a list of those projects and they include X amount of blankets and X amount of garments. Um, so I've included blankets that I have made previously. For anyone who's watched Blanket Stack, which is like 14,000 of you, so thank you so much. I know some of you have watched it multiple times as well and I thank you for that. Um, whoever has watched Blanket Stack will know that I think maybe 
a third of the blankets that I showed there weren't finished, they were works in progress and so I've pledged to get those finished as well. Um, and so I picked the first project which is this one and this was called, when I started making it, it was called Distraction but it's also now, now, no, it is also now known as Tetris because of the jigsaw effect. So this tribe is Tetris and this is finished. Now, it's entirely too huge to get into the shot, but ooh, that looks amazing. This is Tetris or distraction and it's finished. It's 418 squares and it was a purely stash diving project. I took this out of my pile to show you when I made my stash busting granny square inspiration video and I realised how close I was to finishing. I think I had under 30 squares to finish and then a whole heap of ends. Um, so the Zoom chat was on a Friday and by Sunday, by Saturday, I think by the Saturday this was finished. Um, I did about 15 of the squares on the Friday night and 15 more Saturday morning and then I spent part of the morning and the afternoon sat in the garden with this on top of me because it's springtime so at that day it was um, warm but with a chill wind so I had this on me and I sewed all the ends in and so that is a finished object. I feel like I need like a klaxon or a, a cheering noise whenever I show you a finished whip. So this is done and it will now go back in the blanket stack though for the time being it's been on my sofa just to enjoy it um, but it will eventually go back in the blanket stack. So that's distraction slash Tetris. We'll leave it there for your viewing. Ooh, nice. And let's prop a bit in there, shall we? Shall we? Oh, lovely. Um, so the next project I pledged to finish was the squares for my Enough Blanket. So my enough blanket will be made by squares like this and they were inspired by Meet Me at Mike's Easy Peasy Blanket. I found a picture on Pinterest and decided to make my own version and then funny enough um, Pip of Meet Me at Mike's has started crocheting again during the pandemic and has actually started a cal. So if you make um, these squares. Not only can you join in on her cal, but you can join in on mine. So her cal is hashtag EP blanket and my cal is hashtag HDDC granny calm. And for my cal, you can use, you can enter any granny squares. So you can make whatever granny squares you want and then you can use the hashtag. So I originally was going to make I think I originally said I was going to make something like 20 and then I thought to extend it to 35 but then when I got to the 20 it felt big enough and I was just done with it. I felt like I'd done enough. So I decided I would get the squares finished and the ends weaved in to class this as a finished object. And so I've done them. They are all here. And I'm just going to show you the colours. So that one was royal blue and like a raspberry pink. And um, most of them are edged in white. And that one is a grey with khaki and white. I'm trying to stack them up neatly. <laughs> this is a lemon with a pink sorbet. 
rosy red with the grey to go around it. And then this one is the walnut brown with, I'm not sure what this colour is, I want to say oyster. So we're going with oyster. Navy blue and a nice, it's a bit darker than mauve. Another grey and this is a, it's like a darker teal colour. Oh, what? I think it, I think it's called petrol blue. And again, we've got a nice purple with the slate grey around it this time. I think this is grape from Stylecraft. And again, slate grey with the white. And then I've got this bright pop of pink around it. And then I've got baby sky blue with apple green and then the white around it. This one is the oyster with a blue a cloud blue and then I've got my nice pop of pink white and green this is my watermelon square I've got the petrol blue with the white and then a pop of a nice apple it's even stronger than an apple green it's very crisp that one and then this one again is the grey I've got the white around it and it's bordered in the royal blue. And then I've got a really soft blue with the navy and the white. Another blue with the rosy red and the white around it. That one looks quite nautical, like a sailor theme almost. Um, and then this one, this one's delightful. I've got a moody blue with this mustardy, it's almost a sunshiny yellow, it's between mustard and sunshine and it's ringed in the white. Oh, royal blue, pomegranate and white, that pink is lovely, it's this one here, <laughs> this one, um, when I finished this blanket I had some scraps left which have gone into this blanket and another one and I've got my apple green slate grey bordered in the white um, and then last one I've got this deeper red like clar claret red um, with the royal blue and the white so in total that is my stack of squares I think there's 20 one, two, three, four, five. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there's 20 squares there and I have weaved in all of the ends. So each one's got three colours, so that was 60 ends was it? And they're all done. And so that is another finished object um, and it will stay that way until I put in a yarn order so that I can get the joining colour. But as I explained in one of my previous videos, um, that's going to wait until I have a couple more blankets ready to be joined and then I'm going to do a bulk order, which I'm getting close to. So my other finished project, project? Finished whip at the moment is another one where I've got the squares as far as I can. So I decided I wanted to make a two round granny square blanket, having made a two round granny square curtain. And I want the centres to be entirely pink and I'm going to join it in a colour very similar to my sofa. And so I gathered all of my pink scraps, which wasn't very many actually, because pink is one of my most used colours. Um, and I decided to make as many centres as them as possible. Now, I haven't completely exhausted my pink scraps because I want it to go into one of my current whips, which is called my Together Blanket, which I'll go into in a minute. So I've kept tiny little bits just so I could put the odd round of pink in there. Um, but I'm talking like not even 
maybe like one handful of colours. Um, so I have made all of these centres. There's 410 centres in this bag. And when I did the Zoom chat, this is what I was working on. And when I finished the chat, I had 187 centres. And then I think by like a week later, well not even a week later, I finished distraction. I finished the enough squares and then I finished these. And I think that was by like the Tuesday these were done. Yeah, there was the Tuesday. Um, and this is now finished until I get more pink. So when I order the joining yarn for Enough and a couple of other blankets, I will get the joining colour for this, but I will also buy more pink to go into it. So just to show you some of the colours in here, and disclaimer, I haven't weaved all of these individual ends in. I'm going to do that as I go along. As I join a row, I will pick. I will weave the ends in. Um, so I've got loads of different colours in here. This one is um, Stylecraft Wild Rose. I've got these colours in here, but it's very similar to the joining colour, so I may take them out, I'm not sure. It's like a parchment slash mink. Um, I've got the brighter pinks in here. I have got more of a muted pink um, I've got glitter pinks I've got cream and I have got baby pink Nope, it is baby pink. And I have got um, a couple of different glitter pinks. One of them being the pink that I joined my two round granny square curtain with. So you've got a lighter one, a very bright one, and that one's bordering like slightly lilac. I've got, um, this colour is the Starcraft Mushroom and it's a very pale mauve. Um, there's also some grey and peach in here. So I've got the lighter grey shade and then I've got peach. Um, and together I think they create, oh and then I've also got this bright almost neon fiesta pink. Together, it's going to create a really, really nice effect. So I've got 410. I need 2,400 when I last counted. Though I did base that on the measurements of my curtain, which used a 3.5 mil hook, and I used a four and a half on this. So I may, I may be able to make it slightly smaller. So what I'll do is I will make up a chunk and I will use that as my measurements and then I'll know how many centres I need. That one doesn't have a name, so it will probably come to me as I work on it, but that is another object I'm classing as finished. I can do no more on it until I get more yarn, which means I now am working on two whips, three whips, three whips. Um, I have got three whips on the go. I'm trying to not so much be monogamous but um, I definitely think that the YouTubers I watch when they focus on that one project they get a whole lot more done than I do flitting from eight projects. Um, and I don't really enjoy the overwhelm of having a million projects on the go. I love all the ideas that are in my head and that I want to work on but I definitely think for progress sake and for team finishers sake, I need to focus on a select amount of projects. So one of the ones, I'm, one of the projects I'm working on is a daily granny square blanket. This is um, called Together. If you keep seeing me look out, it's because there's a pigeon. I don't know if he's flirting or fighting with another pigeon, but they're really, they're, he's really trying. 
Anyway, this is called Together. The, on the first day that I started working from home due to the COVID-19 pandemic, I decided I was going to make a daily square. I settled on five rounds and decided to just do them join as you go, random colours, so I didn't need to wait for a joining colour. I've made it seven squares in width, which is a week, um, and this is actually behind now by, I think it's four squares. So up until last week, I was putting them on daily, and then I really got into the mindset of team finisher, and I just seem to have not picked this up. And also because I tidied up the yarn room, and I put the lid on the double knit yarn, and I've put it in the stack, and I know now that to get it down, I need to lift it all down. And I hurt my hand at the weekend. So I kind of just been like, mm, don't think I'm gonna fight with the yarn tower. Um, I was rearranging some concrete slabs and trapped my finger. And you can just see on the end that it's black and bruised and it doesn't really hurt. I just can't grip with it very well. Um, so, this is behind by, I think, four squares now. Because I'm pretty sure... Um, is it four? I think it needs Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's four squares behind because I'm actually into week five now. So tonight I'm going to catch this up. I've already picked in my mind, I've got like a colour scheme for each day that I want to add in. Um, so then that will be onto the fifth row. I am into week five. That is, wow, five weeks of being at home. I'm really enjoying doing it, and I like that I've got a granny square project on the go. And now I was in the habit on the Sundays of weaving in the ends, but I was completely obsessed with another whip that I was working on to get it finished, and so I powered through on that. Um, so this Sunday I will weave in all of the ends that you're seeing here and get it up to date and then from Monday add to it daily. I've seen um, Emma of Potter and Bloom, she's doing a daily hexagon. Um, I've seen a few people using the HDDC hashtag are doing daily granny squares. Um, it's up to you if you want to join in. It is definitely not too late to catch up um, because I know we can all make squares at the rate of knots. So that's together. Um, and then my other whip is, most of it is outside, but it's the um, jumper that I'm making, the granny square crop jumper and I'm just reworking the cowl at the moment. Now I um, was almost done and then I graded it and realised that I wanted to make some slight changes to it and I want the one that I've made to be a true sample for the photos. So I've actually ripped it all the way back to the granny panels and started again. So both the granny panels are done including the shaping for the shoulders and the back and the side seams. The cowl is almost done, then I've got the ribbing and then I have two sleeves to do again. I really don't enjoy sleeves. Um, so I'm hoping to just power through on that and get that done because the grading's done. It can go to the tech editor and then it can um, come out to you for testing and for release. Whew. And that will be a huge moment because I feel like I've been trying to do this for years with various projects. Um, but as part of Team Finisher, I pledged to get the designs that I'm working on, five of them, graded, tech edited, tested and released for you all. So those five projects are the granny square crop, the full length granny square one, and the difference between them is as, as is one is fully crochet and the other one, the longer one, has got knitted sleeves and ribbing. Um, then I have got, so the two granny square jumpers, Promise, which is a granny square jumper dress, Rizum, which is a cropped granny square jumper, 
and um, Enamoured Sash Inspirited, which is a cosy um, crochet. What am I saying? <laughs> cosy crocheted granny square stripe or square cardigan. Um, and until they're done, I will not be. Well, I can't say I won't be working on other designs because I am creating other designs at the same time. But I want to get them done before I order any more yarn to start even further designs in my head. Um, I, I am also working on other designs. I've started to grade a knitted uh, vest dress that I really wanted to make and I swatched for it before a pledge team finisher. So as I swatched for it, I'm okay to continue with it. So that's, it's in a bowl because I've been sat outside and I didn't want my yarn on the floor. Um, so that blanket, a uh, blanket? jumper, which I think I'm going to call Remake, R-E-M-A-K-E, -E, and I will go into all the reasoning nearer the time. Um, I've been working on that, so that's whip number two. And then whip number three is a knitted object. Um, and only the tribe stars really know about this project, but I have made a lot of progress on it, and so I want to show it. I want to share it. Um, I'm always a bit hesitant to share some of these projects because I feel like once I've shared them, they lose their magic for me. I don't know why, and then I don't always continue, but I've pledged team finisher, so this is getting finished. And until this is finished, I can't knit anything else because it's currently taking up three of my cables, two on the sleeves that aren't quite finished yet, and the back panel. And so until this is done, the other projects I've swatched for can't start, so that's a good incentive. So I am making an Aran cardigan. And Aran basically means, for anyone that's not a knitter, is all of this complex cable stuff. Means um, that signifies the traditional Aran cardigans. I'm using Aran weight yarn, which is worsted weight yarn. And are you noticing a very like tonal beige neutral colour palette going on. It's strange. Um, but I really enjoy wearing neutrals. I love making in the bright colours but I like wearing the neutrals. So this yarn is um, a 400 gram ball of yarn. It's iron weight or worsted if you're not from the UK and it was from Audi which is just a supermarket here. Um, and I think it was about £5 for 400 grams. Um, and I'm making a cardigan from a book called Vintage Knits. And it's a cropped Aran cardigan. And this is the back panel. Um, so I've done the rib at the bottom and I'm now well into the pattern repeat. So the pattern repeat is 18 rows and I am on the second repeat. I think I'm on row, I don't know, 13, 14. And this panel needs to be 11 inches before I can do the back decreases. So I am at 5 inches, I think. Um, not including the rib. I need to check whether the rib's included before the decreases. But it's got moss stitch down here. And then this amazing diamond cross cable with moss stitch in the centre. Um, and then it's got a simple 6 cable, 6 stitch cable. And then this centre stitch is called trinity stitch and um, some of you may know it as a popcorn stitch and then it is mirrored on the other side and the texture is everything I am loving it now I started it a while back and I sped through the sleeves and then I got to the decreases on the sleeves I didn't really feel like I knew what I was doing so I put them down and I tried to cast the back on, I got to the rib, and then I just felt like this pattern was way too daunting, and so I put it down. And part of the problem for me is, time to make is precious, and I feel like projects like this are very slow going, whereas projects like this I can knock out really, really quickly. Um, and so for me, this has been a real, like, I'm not going to say journey, because that sounds corny, but... Um, 
a real project and a real experiment, even a challenge to slow down and really focus on what I'm doing and enjoy it. Now, it takes me about 20, 20 to 30 minutes to do a row on this. I am getting quicker because now I'm starting to feel more familiar with the pattern. But when I first started, it was like 30 minutes to do the first repeat, first row after the ribbing. So if you think that I'm on to about row 40, that makes you realise how much time is going into this. Um, and so I'm quite simply just aiming to do six rows a day, which equates to about two hours, but as I'm getting quicker, it's taking less time. Um, and then eventually it will be done. And as I said, this needs to be finished before I can start my next knitted project. So that's an incentive. And also with Team Finisher, I just want to get these done. And I could wear this. I could so wear this. I love the colour. Um, as I said, I've done sleeves. Now I am not a strong knitter to say. Like... I'm not, crochet is my thing, um, the only other thing I've knit is socks. First thing I ever knit was two at a time, toe up, socks, and since then I've probably made like another three pairs of socks, and that's it, I'm not a knitter. Um, so to undertake this pattern is massive, but I really, really wanted to do it. So this is the sleeve, it's got moss stitch with the double row of cable, Trinity stitch down the centre panel and then it's mirrored out there and I love it. Now this jumper's a bit bulky but to give you a rough indication, wow. Um, and I have got sleeve one, most of sleeve two. There's actually a slight fault on that one. It needs taking back, and I didn't feel confident to take it back, but having wrangled with the back panel and the more complex cable, I'm ready to be able to take that back now. Um, so if I just show you in comparison where it is, it's probably about two inches below, and I need to take maybe an inch off of it you can see there's a hole here I want to fix that hole and then build that up and then they need the decreases um, so I'm going to get this back panel finished decreases and everything bound off finish the sleeves and then I've got the two fronts to do and then I can seam it and I will have a finished Aaron cardigan so that one is a very a completely different experience to my crochet um this is very slow i want to say soothing but it can be outright annoying when you realize you've made a mistake um but i am learning a huge amount in doing it it's very it is almost meditative because i am really thinking about the yarn, what stitch is coming next, I'm really thinking about um, the pattern, I'm taking the time after each section just to have a quick look to make sure that it's sitting right, that I haven't made any mistakes, um, so it is really teaching me the values of slowing down and I am really enjoying it. So that's the Aaron cardigan that I'm working on. So this quick 15 minute video that I was going to sit down and show you my whips is now almost 40 minutes. So on that note, I am going to say I hope wherever you are that you are well, you are safe and that you're finding some joy wherever you can. Um, I had taken tiny little bits of footage of the garden and whatnot um, to put in at the end. So we will see how long this is. I might add it in. And then the only other thing to say is that there is a um, Zoom for the Tribe Stars on Saturday the 18th of April. So you will be, will be, will be, this will be coming out on Friday the 17th of April, which gives you 24 hours to sign up 
to Patreon as a Tribe Star and get the meeting details and join in on the chat. Now I've had people say that they feel really nervous, um, don't worry, it's not recorded so nobody will be watching it afterwards and it was just a very nice chilled environment, it was just friends having a chat about crochet or knitting, showing projects, um, asking advice on what colours to use next and things like that. Um, you are on video but it's just like video calling a friend or a daughter or a sister um, or just being on like a work conference call, only enjoyable. <laughs> so if you want to join in on that, that is the next one is Saturday the 18th um, of April 2020 at 8.30 GMT time. Now don't worry if you're in a different time zone, you can easily find out the time zones through Google and we was on that Zoom chat for three hours. So if you want to pop in for an hour and go, that's fine. If you have work and can only make half an hour, feel free. If you want to stay the whole time, excellent. So hopefully I'll see some of you in the Zoom chat. If not, I will see you again soon. I'm going to try and have a schedule of regular YouTube lives, um, Zoom chats and then these sit down chats as well just to keep everyone entertained during this time so take care tribe and hopefully see you soon bye Who can say